This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and OMG, it's dual screen phones everywhere. You see what I did there? So this is the Nubia Z20. That's a ZTE brand phone. So what does this mean to two screen phone? It looks like a normal candy bar, right? Look what happens when I turn it around. OMG, we're gonna look at it now. So I know there were those of you who had their doubts when I shared this on Twitter and on Instagram. Follow me there if you wanna actually see things before I review them when they're pretty interesting like this. And I have to say, it's really very well done. You get an OLED curved display on the front. You get an OLED display on the back. And you get a Snapdragon 855 CPU. Not just 855, it's the 855 Plus. The newer, a little bit faster one, the Adreno 640 graphics. Eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. Lots of LTE 4G bands, we'll talk about that in a bit. Triple cameras. So it's a pretty well-equipped phone. And no, it's not $2,000 like the Galaxy Fold. This one is around $600 or so. So availability is going to depend on what country you're in. Chinese exporters will be selling this like geek buying and gear best and all that sort of thing. And I believe that Nubia brand is going to be selling it through their own website. I'll put a link in the description just so you can find them. They're not certainly a household word here in the United States. So you should be able to buy it direct as well. So around $600 or so, it's insanely reasonably priced for something that has pretty flagshipy specs. Though like the OnePlus, it doesn't have IP68 water resistance and it doesn't do wireless charging. Okay, I can live with that for the price. So it's sort of like you're getting a second screen for free given the price, $600 in the specs here. 6.42 inch display on the front. This is Gorilla Glass 5. And on the back, it's also Gorilla Glass 5 and what they call synthetic sapphire glass. I have no idea what that means. There's a factory installed screen protector on the front and the back and it's one of those thick sort of rubbery ones. I'm gonna take off the back one so you can see what it looks like. It's fine to take it off. It's not gonna hurt the phone or anything like that, but you probably want to leave it in place on the back because obviously one of the gotchas with this is you can't really protect this with a traditional case can you maybe they'll come out with a bumper case or something like that so you're not blocking the screen so how does this craziness work and this is a 5.1 inch oled display i'll put the specs on screen for the front and back resolution so you can keep track of all that well it works just the same as it would with any Android phone. And it's interesting, it has a kind of warm color cast. You can also enable blue light filtering mode and make it even warmer. But given the fact that this is a, well, basically a very shiny blue back, you would think it might be a cooler color cast. But other than that, there's a, they've done software right with this. It's not just what's the point of this. But let's talk about what is the point. The primary point is notice there's no notch. There's no motorized pop-up camera to make it more complex, more expensive, and more breakable. The idea is if you want to take a selfie, you just turn it around and look at it, and you can use any of the three high-quality rear cameras to do selfies. And in fact, the camera on the phone automatically sends when you're using the rear screen, and it'll put it in a subfolder called selfies if you've used the phone in this mode, looking at the back to take pictures with it. But beyond that, they've thought about some other use cases for this. There's a little lock button. There's an icon on the side of the screen. We'll show it to you up close. And that way you can lock it if you only want the front screen to show or the back screen to show, for example. So everybody makes jokes about porn, right? So you don't want your porn to swap to the back screen or something like that. You can have it mirror the display so it's doing the same thing on the front and on the back, or you can have it be two separate displays. I suppose in theory, if you're sharing this with somebody, they can be trying to play, I don't know what, Mario Kart on the back and while you're using the phone for something else on the front. Or if you're into multitasking really quickly, you got your Twitter feed on one side, you've got your web browser, your YouTube on the other side, and you can flip back and forth. Is this going to change the world and the way you use a phone? Well, probably not so much, but again, it's not really like costing you anything extra, which is the beauty of this. So the phone does support quite a few 4G LTE bands. You can see them on screen right now. I tested with an AT&T Nano SIM card, and you can see the settings that appear here, including using LTE advanced mode, if avail available, if your carrier supports it. So when I tested this, the, the download speeds were not particularly impressive, but the upload speeds were really fast. It's hard to say if it's the phone or if it's AT&T's bizarro network. Remains to be seen. By the way, this is kind of the follow-up to the Nubia X. I assume they pronounce it X and not 10, which came out about a year ago. Came, went pretty fast. I don't know about that. The other nice thing is when you've got it face down, you still see notifications. You have a sleep screen on this just like you would on the front screen. And they have some really lovely animations, like a beautiful fighting fish that goes with the very pretty blue back on this. It's also available in what they call diamond 
black. Speaking of that blue, this is a really pretty phone. I didn't expect that. It feels and looks very premium. It's glass, it's metal around the frame. All that's well done. They have a few other party tricks. Remember HTC and the squeezy phones? You can squeeze it to do something like take a screenshot. This has the squeezy phone feature on the sides. And there's not one, but two power buttons. And the power buttons have fingerprint scanners embedded that work very well. So I guess so either way, whichever way the phone is facing, you've got a comfortable ergonomic experience for unlocking it. You get the idea. Or if you're super security minded, they came up with this other thing, say you're using Google Pay and you really want to make sure, you can require that both fingerprint scanners are used and activated for something like Google Pay. So yeah, you can enroll fingers on both sides and it will ask you. So they've thought some stuff to do with it. It's not bad. It's not just a what's the point of the back. In terms of performance, this is Snapdragon 855 Plus, which is a flagship level processor. It's the fastest you can get. Performance is quite good on this for playing games, for multitasking, which you can obviously do a little bit extra of given the two screens here. And even running the two displays, I haven't noticed any performance drag on this. Playing games, doing YouTube, all those normal things. If you are playing games, the phone will get warm, but not hot. It's pretty manageable in the hand. It's 6.42 inches, so it's a big phone, but it's not a ginormous phone. So for those of you who kind of like, you know, the big screen experience, but you don't want to go to Galaxy Note 10 Plus kind of size, it's a nice, manageable size phone. The cameras on this, well, this is the same company that brought you the Med Red Magic 3 that we reviewed, and the specs on the cameras look pretty good, including including that 48 megapixel main camera, which is the same Sony sensor used on the OnePlus 7 Pro and 7T. You can see the, the specs for the cameras listed on screen right now. So the hardware really actually isn't bad on this. It's the software, and it has improved since the Red Magic 3 that we reviewed only a couple of months ago. The main camera takes pretty good photos at this point. A good detail, not too much overcoloring, a little bit maybe. Nice and sharp. The telephoto lens is 8 megapixel. It looks a little soft to me. I kept thinking maybe it was a focus distance problem or something like that, but a little on the soft side. The wide angle lens on this does a pretty good job. When you're shooting 4K video, it's going to use the main camera only. And there's no optical image stabilization either at this price. You only have electronic, and it's not the smoothest thing. I don't have the smoothest walk either, but you can see there's some bumping of the camera going on there. It has portrait mode, and actually does a pretty good job in terms of not having accidental artifacts and whoopsies around the edges of the subject of the photo. But again, it seems to use the main lens and not the telephoto lens, maybe because the telephoto lens isn't the highest quality. So you don't always, for something really small, get the framing you might. You might have too much around it, so you might have to do some cropping. But other than that, the portrait mode is not too bad. It has a night mode. It's not up there with the Pixel 3 family of phones or the iPhone 11 or anything like that. It's kind of noisy, but in my usual test now of locking myself in a dark bathroom with just one inch of door open so I don't hurt myself, it, it does actually see stuff that my own eyes can't see, but it's not really great looking either. But it does help for normal night shots if you're walking around the city at night. This is Android 9.0 Pi, and it's a very clean experience. No other garbage or overlays on top other than the settings to control the second screen functions. The speakers on this are pretty darn loud. Sounds pretty good. Battery is 4,000 milliamps. No slouch there either. That's a pretty high capacity battery. And battery life on it is pretty good. And you know, you don't run both screens at the same time, so that's never going to be a drain. It's one or the other on this phone. And its screen on time on this approaches five hours, which is pretty darn good. Helps that it doesn't have the the world's hugest screen. And it will depend on what you're looking at because it is OLED. Primarily dark themes are better. If you're looking at a lot of white web, web pages, it'll be shorter. So that's the Nubia Z20. Again, it's a ZTE sub company. And you can tell that I like it. We'll have to see, you know, how well it does with US bands. It did okay with AT&T like you saw, but the download speeds were lower than the upload speeds, which is kind of weird there. But I like this because it's a high quality, mostly flagship level specs phone in the spirit of the OnePlus. No wireless charging, no water resistance, but really fast processing, very nice build quality, very pretty look at, and it's almost like you're getting a second screen for free. So, hey, if you don't use it that often, you don't have to feel guilty about paying a whole lot of money extra. But it, once you get used to it, it actually is pretty nice when you have it down on the face down on the desk and you give it a little tap to wake it up and you see your notifications without having to raise the phone, that sort of thing. Good stuff. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and also hit the notification bell so you know about them.